Goodness gracious, seven marriages, six kids, and an extremely creepy relationship with his teenage cousin mark Jerry Lee Lewis's extremely complicated family history. The ladies I went with, and I knew great, great ladies, I mean, beautiful ladies, at least I, I did marry mine, you know. According to Nick Tosh's Hellfire, the Jerry Lee Lewis story, Lewis and the woman who would become his first wife met in the summer of 1951, his hometown of Faraday, Louisiana. Dorothy Barton was the daughter of a local Pentecostal minister, Reverend Jewel E. Barton. In February 1952, after Lewis reportedly turned 16 and Barton was 17, they went to get a marriage license at the Concordia Parish Courthouse. Lewis lied on the application claiming to be 21, and Barton listed her correct age, although he later claimed he was even younger, telling people, I was 14 when I first got married. My wife was too old for me. To support her, Lewis agreed to follow in the footsteps of her father and become a preacher, but he never got around to it, preferring instead to play music at bars. By mid-1953, Barton had left Lewis and filed for divorce. According to Newsweek, that split hadn't been legally finalized when Lewis remarried later that year. Technically, the union lasted just 20 months. Before the end of 1953, Jerry Lee Lewis was ready to get hitched again. Or maybe not, because he claims that he was forced to marry Jane Mitchum by his second wife's family. He told people, One day she told me she was going to have my child. Her brothers were hunting me with whips. I was real worried, so I married her, but never properly. The early days of the relationship led to Lewis's first child, a boy they named Jerry Lee Lewis Jr., and their second child, Ronnie, was born two years later. This marriage would be over in 1957, but not before forming a short-lived legacy. The younger Lewis took after his father musically, and while just a teenager, he joined his father's band as a drummer. In November 1973, just days after performing with his father on the live music TV series Midnight Special, and less than two weeks after his 19th birthday, Lewis Jr. died in a car accident near Hernando, Mississippi. He was driving alone in a Jeep near his father's farm on a rural route when it flipped over, killing him instantly. The death of Jr., followed closely by the death of his beloved mother, pushed the elder Lewis into deeper substance abuse. He told people, I was drinking heavy. I needed a fifth of tequila just to sober up. It wasn't the marriages that brought me down. It was just the passing of the caskets. There remains some mystery as to how and why Lewis's second marriage ended. Lewis claims the wedding was never legally valid, rendering Mitchum's filing for divorce unnecessary. Still, what was left of the marriage, legally speaking, hadn't been completely dissolved by the time Lewis moved on to wife number three. Jerry Lee Lewis got married for a third time at age 22, but when the specifics of that relationship became known to the public, the backlash was so severe that Lewis's tremendous early career momentum was halted. Lewis exchanged vows in December 1957 with Myra Gale Brown, daughter of his supporting bassist J.W. Brown. She was also Lewis's cousin, and she was 13 years old when they walked down the aisle. In May 1958, Lewis was headed to England for a tour that should have expanded his fame. He brought his wife for five months with him, and when he landed in London, reporters wanted to talk about nothing but his bride. He introduced her as his wife, but he unsuccessfully tried to downplay the scandal by telling the press that Brown was 15, not 13. No longer welcome in England, Lewis returned home, when the news about his teenage bride had already damaged his celebrity. I married my cousin, I was wrong. It blew my career down the drain, like a billion dollars. The marriage lasted 13 years and produced two children, B.B. and Steve. Tragically, Steve Allen Lewis drowned in the family pool at the age of three. The death was the first of several that would send Lewis into a self-destructive spiral in which he self-medicated with alcohol and narcotics. Myra Gale Brown later alleged that Lewis abused her physically and mentally. In her court filings, she alleged that her estranged husband had threatened to hire operatives to throw her into a river and to attack her with acid, according to the Village Voice. Lewis admitted, It was all my fault. She caught me cheating. After that divorce was finalized in 1970, the 36-year-old Lewis got hitched again the same year, marrying a 28-year-old Memphis woman named Jaron Gunn Pate. By the time they wed, Pate was already pregnant with Lewis's child. Over the course of the 70s, Lewis and Pate separated, then got back together, sued each other for the divorce, patched things up, separated once more, and tried for divorce once more. Through all that, according to Vulture, the pair lived together during their first month of the marriage and never again. In a 1979 filing, Pate alleged that Lewis had victimized her with adultery, prolific alcohol and drug use, and cruelty. With the divorce settlement almost legally complete in the early 1980s, ending a stormy decade of marriage, Pate told a Mississippi court that when she called her soon-to-be former husband to discuss the financial terms of the arrangement, he told her it wouldn't be an issue, reportedly telling her, you are not going to be around very long anyway. Pate petitioned the court to force Lewis to pay spousal and child support as she was raising their 10-year-old daughter Lori alone and had to resort to food stamps to help offset costs. For much of Lori's life, Lewis denied that he was her father. 
In June 1982, Pate's body was discovered in the swimming pool at the home of a friend in Collierville, Tennessee. She was declared dead at 38 years old. According to the UPI, authorities later ruled that the drowning was accidental. In 2011, Lewis's daughter Lori Lancaster made headlines for her own reasons. Police in Germantown, Tennessee arrested Lancaster on a charge of criminally negligent homicide following the death of her infant son. According to police, Lancaster ingested muscle relaxants and accidentally smothered her five-month-old son in her sleep. Lancaster was released after posting bond. A year after the death of his fourth wife, Lewis married Sean Stevens, whom he had met in 1981 while touring in Dearborn, Michigan. Stevens married Lewis, moved in, and the relationship took several downward turns. Reports from people close to the couple recalled incidents of domestic violence and Lewis growing obsessed with setting up a sexual encounter between him, his wife, and his wife's sister. Just 78 days after the wedding, Sean was dead, according to the Village Voice. When she didn't wake up on the morning of August 24, 1983, Lewis's household staff investigated and found her with heavy bruises on her arms and hip, blood on her hair and on her hands, and all over the room and on her clothing. A first responder noted that there were fingernail-type marks on her husband's hand, which he claimed was from punching the door. An autopsy was conducted and her death was attributed to an overdose of methadone. The fifth Mrs. Lewis was 25 years old. According to the Evening Times, she was believed to be pregnant at the time of her death. And I think that on Judgment Day, it'll all come out, and we'll see what happens. And you find out that Jerry Lee Lewis is not a killer. In April 1984, Jerry Lee Lewis, then 48 years old, married 21-year-old Carrie McCarver. McCarver was a musician, too, part of the McCarver sisters' vocal trio with her siblings Sherry and Dee Dee, popular around Memphis at the time. J.D. Davis's biography, Unconquered, noted that the wedding came just 10 months after the death of Lewis's fifth wife. Lewis and McCarver had a son named Jerry Lee Lewis III, and in 2005, not long after his 18th birthday, the couple filed for divorce. A judge approved a financial settlement in June 2005 in lieu of courtroom proceedings. Outside the courthouse, Lewis told reporters, It's been a long day, and it's been an expensive day. While the terms of the divorce were not disclosed, he got to keep his 40-acre ranch in northern Mississippi, but he had to hit the road on a tour to make good on the financial obligations resulting from the settlement. Lewis was unattached for the next seven years, by far the longest bachelor period of his adult life. At age 76, Jerry Lee Lewis married for the seventh and final time. According to WTHR, Lewis met 62-year-old Judith Brown Coglin when her ex-husband got her a job as the rock and roll star's in-home caretaker. Coincidentally, Judith Brown was once married to Rusty Brown, Lewis's cousin, and the brother of his former teenage bride, Myra Gail Brown. Lewis and Judith married in a small wedding in Natchez, Mississippi in March 2012, attended only by Brown's sister and her husband, and Lewis's sister and her spouse. He told Newsweek, To the people that think there's never going to be someone out there for them to love, just wait until they're in their 60s and 70s. It's Better than ever. Free of much of the public scandal and tension of so many of Lewis's previous marriages, the couple lasted 10 years until his death. But Jerry Lee Lewis's final marriage wasn't completely quiet. According to Radar Online, the couple filed a lawsuit against his daughter Phoebe and her husband Ezekiel Lofton for libel, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and other claims after Lofton authored some Facebook posts about Lewis. In the filings, Lewis and other family members accused the Loftons of unnecessarily sedating the musician committing elder abuse, and stealing millions of dollars from his fortune. Phoebe had managed her father's personal and professional life from 2000 to 2012, and according to Lewis, she took advantage of the arrangement. In March 2017, a Tennessee judge dismissed the case, finding that Lewis and Brown hadn't properly proved that the matter came under the legal jurisdiction of Tennessee, where they had filed. At the time, Lofton resided in Virginia, Lewis and Brown in Mississippi. If you or anyone you know needs help with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.